The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. And I got Lou from Fairfield, Connecticut, man. How you doing, Lou? I'm doing good, Daryl. And I got to tell you, you're not just blowing hot air out there. I think the way you look at the market is terrific. You're a nice guy as far as over the TV. All the research you do, all the homework you do, I truly appreciate it. I appreciate the, your view of the market. It's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Daryl Martin. All right, folks. Welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I'm your host, Daryl Martin, right here on TFNN.com. we got Tiger TV rolling to you live. Ten hours of live market commentary each and every day. Along with uh, broadcasting Tiger TV directly inside the eSignal platform and anywhere on your mobile phone at tfnn.mobi. Let's check out where the markets are at right now. We got the S&P is down just a couple points, uh, bouncing on back up. Uh, Tommy was uh, doing some nice analysis this morning uh, with him on the Bull Binary Hour. Bounced off one deviation. He called a buy which is a rare thing to hear him. It's almost like uh, listening to number one down in the pits there, and he's like, he's always short. Well, every once in a while, he'll step on and buy, but it's rare. Same thing with Tommy, buying right in, and it bounces right off and nails settlement. And uh, could not been a better call. So awesome call from the Bull Bear Binary Eye this morning. Great trade, worked out great. We got the Russell down a point right now. We got NASDAQ down 46.5. We got the Dow up 16. Copper right now is sitting uh, just you know, a little on the positive side and gold uh, barely down, but a little on the negative side, about a quarter percent at the moment. We're going over at silver. It's down about a half percent. Oil is currently up 17 cents. Natural gas is uh, pretty flat on the day. We got uh, corn. It's up. It's down eight bucks right now, but it's pretty volatile because we had those ag reports. Same thing with soybeans. And uh, we'll step back. We'll look at those here in just a moment. We got the pound dollar is down 56 pips. The euro dollar is down 58. Euro pound currently up seven with the dollar franc up 18 and the U.S. yen up six. Euro yen right now is down 62. Aussie yen down 63. So some big moves in those cross FX pairs. And then looking on over at the DX market, a king dollar climbing on up, up about a third percent. And bonds moving up almost a quarter percent right now on the 30 years. All right, they get you caught up on where we're at on the markets. We're going to add doing some uh, market reviews with you. Let me go ahead and open up a few charts here and see what we come up with. We got the pound dollar, um, and we got some nice spike strikers going on last night. Went short, perfect short right there. Or Although no, this was this morning, so we got uh, yeah, a nice spike striker right out of the gate this morning. And uh, we got a nighttime, daytime. I mean, they're all around the corner. This is those volume spikes. And uh, you know, we talked. You know, we were talking about some of the um, traders that won the contest, and this is what one of those top traders used. They went in, they used those big volume moves, and uh, so it's it's a very simple um, thing to implement. And um, you know, you do have to you know use a little bit of creativity sometimes in the evening uh, when there's lower applied volatility because you know there's less expected movement. And sometimes it may be better to do at the money. Maybe maybe you see a great out of them. And it's two ticks away for twenty bucks. Well. If it's only two ticks away, I mean, buy it for 20 sell it for 40 You know, make 100% in just a tick or two move. So, you know, make sure you're using that creativity. Um, if you're going down, we got uh, IC Dollar. So it uh, had some overnight spike trackers, had some early morning ones. So that Euro session uh, doing really well. And then uh, early this morning as well, we got Pound Dollar. Let's go back and look at Pound Dollar. Let's check out MVPs on Pound Dollar right now. We got MVP moving on down pretty heavy this morning. 3 a.m. coming off the uh, minus one deviation, moving on down to two deviations down. And uh, that's a great call right there. Pound yen, of course, following suit. And it's moving on down, 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 down. Also hitting two deviations. And uh, that move started right around the uh, euro open. And things just started tumbling. Um, going on into the euro yen, we see a similar move. It didn't quite move near as far. But on that euro open, boom, we got a short and followed it all the way down a deviation. 
just on the momentum volatility predictor. Going over to the Aussie dollar. Aussie dollar last night also crashing. So King dollar just really uh, pulling it all down. But moved on down there, and we got to move down to, uh, you know, two. What is that? Two and a half deviation. Move down. So pretty massive move on the Aussie. Um, let's check out a few other markets. we got a uh, euro dollar. Talk about euro yen. It's euro dollar. Moved down pretty much perfectly one deviation. A lot of these just, like I said, just kicking off right on that euro session. And um, I remember whenever I was first uh, trading and trying to get out of my day job, right, I was, uh, I was getting up early and trading that euro session. And then I'd put on some option trades before I went to work, and then I'd be, you know, trying to log on to my Thinkorswim uh, platform on my iPhone, <laughs> and um, or at least on a computer. I had it, I installed on my desktop on my computer and everything, and that was fun. Um, I went in my iPhone. I don't know what phone I had that thing on because it was I don't know. I, I think I had to install the application. I uh, didn't have that phone benefit. I could just watch it on my phone. I think is what was going on. Um, anyway, so Nasdaq. Check out the NASDAQ right here. Really choppy. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully it's, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go back over these and catch on up. But like I said, we did get some nice moves with that ES moving on back up. Gold moved on down, but uh, been pretty choppy today. So a little bit of chop across the board. Not a complete surprise, but, I mean, Russell, I mean, as much as it looks choppy, I mean, it went down a deviation. It reversed. It went up a deviation. So this is a great deviation reversal move right there that one can take advantage of. And one of my favorite ways to play this, I talk about it, you go in, you buy the Russell, you sell 10 spreads, and you let it do its thing. And uh, that way, you know, you got massive upside, you got very little downside. And uh, it's just, I think it's one of the best ways to, you know, play, especially at deviation moves where you had a lot of volatility going on. Um, we got, you know, oil over here going down a deviation, going up a deviation, all the way on back up. And uh, that happened out of the gate in the morning, so you had plenty of time to take advantage of that with the MVPs and everything else. Uh, going in, and we got the dollar uh, still, uh, you know, holding on strong, doing well. And uh, it ran on up. Like I said, it did not like getting kicked down a couple days ago and decided to come on back in full force. Getting you a little news update. Uh, European stocks, DAX and all that, just getting hammered. Uh, me and Tommy were talking about our plans of like just looking at the market just getting hammered and flying down. And um, let me see here. I was going through some of those levels. I even posted them over in the Tiger Den this morning. But uh, we were just looking at some of the levels just on, like, you know, the S&P and gold and everything else. And um, I'll pull those up in a little bit after the break here. And it's where we're looking at the market going to. Just short term, some of the drops we're looking at. But, uh, anyways, European stocks really getting nailed. Um, so we're finishing just right off their lows, and uh, we got the S and P's dropping on down. I, I want to say, I want to say, I pulled up a, a chart over here on the S and P. Let's see if I still have it. There we go. Yep. So here's uh, my S and P daily chart, MVP and volatility trend line on that, and just watching it move on down there, and uh, you can see that we are right near, this is the 200 peering moving average. I can make it a little bit thicker for you for those watching over on Tiger TV and the eSignal platform and the den there. That's a 200 period moving average we got going on. So it's coming right on back down to that if it's able to break through it. I mean, we got a lot of volume already. We're picking up steam going into this one. Usually that's pretty normal. You know, like right here as we're going down, we pick up some volume. It relaxes a little bit, pick up some volume. But then it relaxed when it hit the 200. Like it hit like right on it with volume, and then the volume died down, and then it bounced. So really watching uh, our volume on this to see how we end up um, overall once we hit that 200 period moving average. And there we go. Got to update that so we get live volume on it. Um, and there we go. Okay, so it'll be interesting to see how the volume is up today. Would not be surprised to see it be a little bit lighter. I think that's you know we got that with the down move, the back up move. But going into next week, I think we definitely could be seeing some bigger down moves uh, just completely across the board. And uh, what we're looking at, a move on down right now when we're sitting at around 19, what, 21. And uh, basically what I was saying is, you know, this morning I was like, hey, 19, 18, if we go down and just drill down into the uh, intraday time frame. I was like, hey, if we go down, we break. 1918. I'm looking for a move on down to 1909 or so, and then um, potentially the next big move down from there that I'd be targeting. So like right here about the deviation level, um, if we broke on down below that, then.
going for support at 1900, which would be that 200 period moving average. We break that 1900. My next levels are the August lows at 1890. Um, and uh, that could really confirm if it breaks below that, could really basically like, you know, closes below it and then we break the low. That really confirms an accelerated downside. We'll go on for moves on down to 1884, 1874, 1867, 1855, and then down to 1840. And um, that's just our short term moves. I mean, it could easily drop on back down to 1300. Okay. But, you know, what are you going to do today, right? Not this. You try to time those 600 point moves and you're going to be disappointed. But because uh, it, it doesn't go in a straight line. But anyway, so those are my, my critical areas going on down. If we are to fly on back up, what do I got? Well, if we break on back up here and we close on up, then, you know, we got resistance right here around 27 to 30. So, like, you can see this area right here is our resistance area. And, uh, but I, I, right now, I still wouldn't be buying into it. So, I'd be going, okay, it goes up there. If it goes up to 27, I'm going to have um, stops right now at 32. Okay. Then I'm going to short it again and just rinse and repeat. If it did go up higher to 35, I'd have stops at 42. If it got to 48, I'd have stops at 53, and I'd just get, go short. I mean, right now, I'm just short, 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 and um, I may get a break level to go short, or if it goes up to a certain level, I'll go short, but how it just popped up to 1927, that was a short for me again, okay? So went short at 1927, and then looking for a move on down. Uh, from there, I got stops at 1932. What's my target if my short's at 1927? Well, I just look up and go, what was I targeting before? Well, first target's going to be 1918, Okay. And uh, so we're almost there to 1918, and then my next target can go on back down to 1909. So, and I could look at the deviations on the way. 1918 is right above that 0.5. I could look at 1934.7, maybe to tighten up my stops a little bit. If I had 1918, either I'm getting out, or I'm getting out a half, and putting my other half at break even, or I'm putting everything at break even, and tighten it on up. So, a pretty simple way to play it. But uh, if you got multiple targets, you can move basically just move to break even or take off half or whatever. But uh, that gives you right now just my short targets uh, right now on the S&P 500. All right, let me uh, hop on back over. Just keep going. Just, uh, but, yeah, that S&P, man, it's, 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 uh, it could easily – it could, it could fall back down before the end of the day. We'll see. But, um, and like I said, maybe not all the way to 1906, but 1909 right now. Um, let's see. And that's just looking at, you know, magnet levels. Um, Wall Street indices, you know, obviously it's been really volatile. Uh, let's go over it. We got S and P up, and I got that up over another chart, so I'll just bring it up right here and bring up the Nasdaq for you. We'll dive into it a little bit. All right, so right here on the Nasdaq, once that chart gets around to loading up, we'll talk about it when we get back right after this break. Stay right there. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Daryl takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. All right, folks. Welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, it's got a nice post in the den from Zatal talking about the Bradley model, looking at the market turn dates and just move on down that we've had. Looks like it has a little pop for uh, next week potentially planned in there, and then the decline into late November. So appreciate that, Zatal. Got that on up there. And, uh, so we'll see if we get that little bop. We might see that. That might give a head fake. And that's, I think that would be the concern. That might give a head fake on the 200-period moving average. People see it. It bounces a little bit. They think they got the big bounce, okay? And we've had a pretty solid decline here. So, you know, it'll, they, get, they think they got the, oh, okay, now it's time to buy on the 200-period moving average. And then it crashes on down. And I think that, that's going to get like that's gonna get that last little group of buyers in before it pushes down. And that's when I think we're going to start seeing those massive acceleration moves going to the downside. Um, and uh, that sort of, I guess, would be a good way to confirm that it. If it hits it like it, it just barely touches right off of it and pops on back up next week. That would make sense. Anyways, we talked about your stocks getting nailed really hard. It's been rough. Uh, U.S. stocks are a little bit mixed here. We're going in. We're pulling a couple different charts. Uh, I pulled NASDAQ up, and it's just been down. And, you know, um, let's see here. Yeah, just down, 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 uh, down to one and a half deviations. It was able to pull back a deviation from the low. It just fell further than the others. So, yeah, we went to minus 1.5, up to 0.5, and then now we're sitting right at the minus 1 deviation move. 
Let's see where gold looks like it might end up. Right around 1221, 1222. It's been uh, pretty quiet. So, I mean, I had a couple little shorts and 12, you know, right here at 1220.5 being the take profits, and it's kept going up and coming back down. I was hoping to get one more on shorting at 1224. And, uh, but I'll be out here in a few minutes on that. So that's the ideal way to play that, but we'll see where it moves on to. Um, let's see, Canadian stocks even getting hammered. Uh, but a lot of the chip stocks getting nailed. Uh, Tommy was talking about some of these are down massive. We got oil down its lowest level. Um, let's see, uh, is that even accurate? It may be. Let me uh, pull up a little bigger chart. Go back over here. And let's bring up oil. And put that on up there. I don't know how far back we're going to have to go to see this. So I might even go in and uh, just load. Yeah, we're pushing pretty far. Uh, but let's go back and let's make this a little bit different. Let's get as much data as we can because I want to see how far back we can go. Got a month and then let's... I don't know how far back did this thing let us uh, just put a one in front of that. It's going to do weeks, so it ought to accumulate the data pretty quick. And I also may just go over to take this one and pull it up while it's working because that might be just faster. All right, so pulling up oil, bringing that over to a, at least a weekly chart there and um, – Making some pretty major lows. I just want to make sure it's as low as everybody's saying it is. I think it is because it's 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 just been flying down. But um, yeah, I see somebody put out some report, and I was like, I don't know if it's the lowest low since then. But uh, yeah, so like some report on Reuters, man, they just they publish anything these days, right? They're like lowest lows since 2010, and I'm like, not quite. So. Uh, and I, I talked about that news of trade the other day on Wednesday when I was like, yeah, so they're saying that um, oil went down because of the inventory report. It was already down. It went up after the report. But let's see here. Uh, well, that's not even the right story. So like, come on. So this thing will publish up. Maybe, maybe they pulled their story off because they realized they were wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to try it one more time and see if it'll pop on up. Yeah, now we got this Coca-Cola. Okay, um, that story ID is just not feeding in. Um, anyways, but yeah, it says like oil is the lowest low since it was since 2010, and I'm like, uh, I don't think so, because um, if it was, then, well, then the, all the charts are wrong. <laughs> but it is at a big low, and uh, sort of got a little trend on the low here, too. I mean, this is sort of interesting. I haven't really backed out and looked at it this far. But if I go in here, this is sort of an interesting way to look at this. And put on, give me a little uh, shortcut tool so I can draw. And then go over here, grab this line. And I mean, it's a sort of an interesting trend. You know, I mean, you look at this right here. I mean, we might be, you know, that's just one trend line right there. If you look at the long time frame, got a big old pennant setting up. All right, y'all stay right there. We'll be right back after this break. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome on back to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. And uh, NASDAQ looks like this. Push it on back down. And we got gold settled right around 1221. Um, and we'll see where we all we end up on this. I was doing a little bit of more extended analysis, just sort of checking things out on the S&P. And let me bring that back up. We'll look. Or maybe I was on oil. I took, yeah, I did oil. It's an extended weekly analysis report right here on oil. And uh, we're at the 23%. Now, that doesn't matter if you're on weekly, daily, inter or daily, or uh, monthly. At the 23% uh, FIB level right now at this point, we, were, we bounced off the 62%. So, you know, some Tiger uh, numbers right there on the Gartleys. And uh, we also, coming on down, we got a little bit further down. We could move potentially as it uh, extends this bounce that's uh, been happening right here. But we could also tighten it up. I guess instead of using this first number over here. We could tighten this up, and it might line up a little bit better. There we go. It's like right there. So that this might actually, I mean, it's, I'm, obviously, it's always beneficial to look at, you know, trend lines backwards. But uh, just looking at it, I mean, there obviously is just this consolidation zone that seems to be happening right now in oil. It's coming on down lower than a lot of people expected, but it may be coming down to a point where, especially at that FIB level, what the fib has no power except for the power that everybody gives it okay but a lot of people look at them and um so especially longer term position traders so i would not be surprised especially with seeing all the volume we saw on oil 
uh, you know, last week, and we're seeing you know, a decent amount of volume. I'm not saying it's extraordinary, but uh, we see quite a you know quite a decent amount of volume compared to the last couple months. And you can see sort of the volume by the week there I have on the chart below, and uh, that volume picking up often. We're going to see that happen, not only in you know a, a major breaking point on a sell, but I mean it's not like we weren't back there just you know a little bit ago. So this isn't like into the world in oil. But I think it's important to notice, like, hey, we get some big volume. A lot of times we get that big volume spikes, like, right at tops and bottoms. Like, right there, volume spikes up, it turns around. Volume spikes up, it goes down. Volume spikes up, it goes up. So, just got a big volume spike. Would not be surprised to see some bounces in oil, uh, being at this FIB level, being at the support trend level, and also doing the uh, volume analysis. So, uh, move on back up would be directly first to the 38% level there, around 9236 um, okay, so there is just a little outlook for you on oil. And uh, we got uh, Pound Dollar getting some resistance. Let's uh, back on over to Pound Dollar. Bring that one up. And uh, let's see here. Longer term, I don't want to go into that. Shorter term, could potentially uh, check out the trades. And... Let's see here. Let's go into it, dive into a little bit deeper. All right, right up here. Okay, and uh, pound dollar, 10 minutes, and 1.6051. We've got to move on up right now. Some resistance happening a little bit higher. But um, but definitely some support down here at 6,000. So that's sort of the, the big number right there. I mean, just come down right down to that 1.60, but down a two deviation move. A beautiful move. Um, Aussie Yen supposedly uh, taking some major dives. Let's see just how bad it is. <clears throat> I know the Aussie dollar has been going with it, but I think the Aussie Yen may be down on a several month low here. Let's see if that's accurate. And uh, looking at weeklies. And we just busted the low from March. So, yeah, yeah, we're at some pretty big lows right there on the Aussie yen, turning right on back around. All right, well, that gets uh, just a couple, uh, you know, major things. Natural gas moving on up. Uh, let's see. Aussie dollar home loan. We had an iron condor on that last night. So let's uh, pull that up and look at it, see how at least the expectations played out on the trade. And... Uh, Go into it over here, right there. There we go. Um, load that on up for you. Massive, massive moves going on in the Aussie dollar. And uh, we were looking for, I thought we had a home one on there. Let's see here. Pull up the uh, 10th. I'm trying to, there we go. Uh, okay, Aussie dollar home, 6 to 11. So this is in the evening. Obviously, we're looking right here at the current pricing. Let's go back and look at the evening time for when we were looking at that trade. We had our entry. Um, taking place and uh, right here okay so I'll go back into this uh, trade here just in a moment and uh, we got a caller right now uh, Mark uh, calling from Bedford New Hampshire how you doing Mark excellent I, awesome. uh, I want I wanted to know I'm gonna ask you a two-part question first I'm short the IWM I got stopped out on Tuesday and re-entered at the open on Wednesday, and I own the TZA. And I'm wondering, if the second part of the question is, is how could I trade the Nadex product with with a, a daily on this? To, you know what I mean? The difference between when I'm, I'm playing ETFs versus the Nadex platform. Right. Uh, well, IWM is a little bit easier because it's you know it's going to actually be it is the small cap two thousand. Yeah. Uh, where, whereas you know how they rebalance the, the you know triple and double funds and all that stuff. Um, so IWM is a lot easier to do it on. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, one, you do have daily contracts you can go in and buy. Okay. Uh, that's easy. Just and, and trade the spreads. So are you, are you wanting to do, like, longer position trades, or are you want to go short IWM right now, I'm, I'm assuming? I'm, yeah, I'm short. I've been short. Okay. So uh, you can go in, and there's daily contracts every day that open at 6 o'clock, and they go to 4.15. Okay? Excellent. 
So you put another one on, but you'd have a capped risk. So something just, I mean, because we've seen some crazy crap happen lately, right? And right. so something just flies the other way. And you put up a lot less money. Um, you know, I, I mean, if you got portfolio margining, I mean, then you're, you know, maybe you're around 10, 15 percent, um, except for you don't get the discount on the, uh, the triple funds. But if you, you know, if you got just regular, if you got, you know, reg T margin, you know, you're putting up, I mean, about 50 bucks a share right now. I know, I know yep. you am, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you could put up a lot less money for a lot more uh, power because basically 10 Nadex spreads would equal one Russell future. So with the Russell futures uh, quoting right now at 1052, okay, and every point on the Russell, uh, just to give you an idea of the leverage you're getting access to, so 1052, every point being worth 100 bucks. Okay, that's $105,000. That's like you're doing 105 grand on ETFs is what it's equal to. But without having to put up $50,000 to do the trade. Yeah, that's a lot of dough. I can't, I don't. I don't take those trades, so. <laughs> well, I mean, if you if you do a Russell contract, you may only put up like five grand or whatever, like to carry it. Okay. Yep. Yep. But you have one hundred five thousand dollars in buying power. Okay. So because right. that, that's what the contract is worth, they're just making you put up a margin on the trade. So it's usually like you know somewhere around a five percent or ten percent, just depends upon the contract margin. So you, if I put up five grand to control the Russell, I have one hundred five thousand. It's like I put 105 grand in on IWM. Well, I don't have to put up five grand. I can go over to the Nadex product, and I can pull up, you know, their contracts here. Let me see. I got my, at least my demo one logged in right now at the moment, and um, well, I thought I had it logged in. And let's see, uh, Steve. Um, and then I go down here to the indices spreads. I can go to small caps. Say, do it end of day, okay? Yep. And, I mean, here's like this contract right here, 1060 to 1080. Uh, or if I'm going short, I guess 1040 to 1060 right now. So if I have that trade on, I mean, just at this moment. Now, obviously, the price you know varies depending upon what time you get in. Uh, but, I mean, on 10 contracts, I mean, it's a $380 max loss, $360 max loss. And... Um, that's no stop loss. I mean, I could get out if I wanted to, but that's my max stop loss, and that's 10 contracts. That'd be like having $110,000, you know, dollars, $105,000 in buying power with a maximum margin of 360 and a maximum loss of 360 on the day. And I could do just one Pretty of those. Amazing. So I mean, your, your buying power is so massive. Um, another way that you can do it, too, now I don't know how big your positions are, but if you went in and you did a tenth of the size, okay, like on IWM, be right around ten five, okay, and you could use one spread, just one would would hedge ten thousand dollars worth of IWM. That's pretty so, simple. I think that you know I've been looking at your product and I've never traded it, and I'm thinking to myself, why not? You know. Yeah. Well. Oh, and I mean, a lot of people go, well, you can, you can get options on IWM. Why would you do any spreads on IWM, right? Right. Well, well, here's the reason. Is one, you only have to get one, okay? Well, that's, okay, well, that's not a big deal because I can just get one anyway. I can get one and 100, cover 100 shares. It's like, okay, so let's just say that was even. Uh, but two, it's actually, I found it cheaper. I've tracked this. It is cheaper and it's a better hedge to get a daily expiration because – I don't know how much you know about options, but on options, like, basically, they're the cheapest they can be, and they move the fastest, like, on the last day of expiration, like, like on Friday, like on expiration Fridays yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, well, Tom calls it white lightning, so. Exactly. Well, you can get white lightning five days a week. All right, okay? that's what I love. I love and, it. So and instead of paying, like, let's say it costs, you know, $8 at the beginning of the week, maybe it costs, you know, 90 cents a day at 450 and instead of getting, like, that delayed gamma and delta effect, because you got five days to expiration instead of one day, your gamma is through the roof. So you get a lot better hedge. You know, you know, like, you go and you buy, you know, one contract to hedge 100 shares, but if it moves down a buck, you only get maybe, like, 70 cents back, you know, that type thing? Yeah. Well, with this, I mean, you're going to get, like, 90 cents back, okay, or, you know, 95 cents back. And you're going to pay less premium every day to do that. 
So in the premiums combined on all five days, it's still cheaper than buying the weekly. So it's a great way to hedge your ETFs, GLD, IWM, diamonds, spiders. You know, there's a whatever, a EVZ or whatever it is, the Euro dollar ETF. So if you are an ETF trader, if you love trading the ETFs, you want to hold those longer positions, maybe you don't even use the spreads every day. Maybe you're just sort of watching it and you're like, hey, if it busts above this, I'm a little nervous it might pop back high. I want to put something on to hedge it off. I still plan on staying short. I think the market's going down. It's going to crash, whatever. But why not play the long with a little bit of a hedge and get some of that money as it goes up, right? There so, you go. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you can use them. Um, I mean, I use a lot of times to scalp. Now, I'll, do, I'll scalp with the futures just because it's less in commissions and fees and all that. But I'll go in and I'll buy, like, 10 spreads, and then I'll just start scalping short, like when we're at a major, like, you know, Fibonacci level, support level, deviation level. And I'll just start scalping, you know, going for, like, five ticks, five ticks, five ticks, five ticks until I pay my spreads off. Then after that, it's just free scalps for the rest of the day. So there's a lot of cool ways you can trade them long term, right down to scalp trading. So what if I, like, this is my take. What if I work at 9 o'clock in the morning, I put my trades on early in the morning, and I kind of walk away from it because I'm seeing patients all day? Okay. Then what you do is you put your trades on if you're, now, I don't know, are you doing, like, spreads? Is that what you're talking about doing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what you do is you, once you're in your trades, you can set your take profit. And you know your max risk. If you're fine with your max risk, you don't need to worry about a stop loss. A lot of times you're better off without worrying about a stop loss, Okay. Because, you know, the market oscillation and your just heartbeats going and all that stuff. So you get in, you know, like, uh, here, I'll throw in an example for you. I don't know if you're watching here on Tiger TV, but like if, I got oh, in on, if I got in on 10 contracts, as soon as I got filled on it, then I hit buy, hit place. It says, okay, your order's in progress. Your order's been received. Your order is now filled. I go to the open position, and I go, okay, I want to sell it, you know, whenever it gets, you know, $10 higher, whatever. Um so you can basically set your take profit as soon as you get in. I mean, it's really like any other platform. You know, I mean, you, you can set a take profit. So as soon as you get in the trade, you can set your take profit. You can walk away. It'll take care of itself. That's or if you don't even want to take profit, if you just want to let it go all day long and you just want to let it settle out, and that's your choice. I mean, I like having to take profit. At least, at, a, at least if I'm close to the max profit, I want to take it just in case it gets there and it comes back, right? So, right. Uh, but if you don't have one, it'll settle out. You don't have to do anything. There's no exercise. There's no option. There's no like stocks being assigned to you. There's no process or form you have to fill out. It just settles and the cash is back into your account. It's a cash instant settlement. Beautiful. But um, yeah, I mean, think outside. Like a lot of times, I talk about day trading, but sometimes it's set trades and walk. Sometimes it's scalp. Sometimes it's hedge your bigger positions you're holding longer term. There's a lot of ways you can use them. And hedges you don't have to do every day. You can just do on days where you're at. You know. Important levels are big news levels, you know, like FOMC meeting minutes days, things like that. Yeah. So you can hedge off positions. Beautiful. But uh, great questions. Yeah, give me a call anytime if you have any you're trying to figure things out, put pieces together. I'd be happy to help you out. Yeah, no, I'm ready to open my account up with the profits I've made on TZA. Sweet. So you, you nailed it over there, huh? Yeah, I did really well this week, and I haven't had uh, – this was my best week this year, so that's all I can say. You know, right. and, and you know I what? Think it's better I'm than like, being your I... first week this year. So, <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Thank awesome, you so man. Much. Well, I hope you got many more better weeks, and I look forward to hearing from you. All right, thank you, and thank you, Mark. You have a great day, great weekend. We'll be right back after this break. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this.
prospectus and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome back here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. We got John from Philly calling in about the Aussie. How you doing, John? Hey, Daryl. Thanks for taking the call. Daryl. Hey, you bet, just man. Just a follow-up here. Uh, you know me. I learn slowly. So I'm going to have to <laughs> re-ask. Early no in the show, you mentioned you went through a couple of Nadex option trades one could do if one saw volume spikes. You pointed out one with an Aussie dollar volume spike this morning. Would mm -hmm. you kindly share what instruments you would have been trading uh, to speculate on that, please. What instruments I'd be... I, I trade volume spikes with binaries. So I trade them on Aussie, dollar, pound, dollar, basically everything on Nadex. 
So, and, and, uh, and what you're saying is on a volume spike, say, down, during that volume spike, you just speculate going the other way by buying a cheap binary uh, with the idea of getting out without an hour, excuse me, within an hour or two's time. Is that kind of the idea? Um, I'm always doing current hour. For, uh, well, I'm usually doing current hour, and I'm usually doing in the money um, contracts. Gotcha. Very good. Uh, okay. But it may not be just going the opposite direction. It may not be as natural as just there's a spike go the other way. Sometimes I'm going with the strike. I'm looking at what the price action is. Got it. Got it. So, Very good. Follow-up yeah. question. Today we had some volatility regar uh, surrounding the USDA crop report. Share with me, if you could please, Daryl, what trade you could have used uh, on the November on the soybeans. I see the soybeans closed last night, yesterday, excuse me, at um, 9.41. There was mm -hmm. a pop post-report up to 9.51, so up 10 cents. And now we've, drove, now we've uh, crashed lower down 9.24. What instrument could you have used um, on that pop at uh, 12.05 to bet on the short side, please? Uh, well, you could do a short binary. You could also do a uh, short straddle. Uh, and then you could do it on the soybeans on Nadex. That would be the only way I would do it on an ag report. Um, and usually you do, you are right. What happens is you get a pop and then you get a reversal. Oh, that happens a lot on a lot of news. Um, and so I just uh, let's see if I can give you an example. Please, thank contracts you. Contracts that are up here. Let me open it on up um, and pull up soybeans. Okay. So as one example, over here, got my live count on the other computer. Uh, so right here you go up, and it's up at 9.51. Let's just say you're expecting maybe a deviation reversal, okay? So like just a 9.32 or something, okay? Exactly. Well, you could have sold 9.32. If it was up a deviation away from it, you're probably looking at that thing costing you, you know, probably selling it around 80 to $90. Okay. Um, and, you know, maybe worst case 70 with all the volatility happening and expectancy built in. Understood. I, as you see, that came all the way back down, and now it's at sixty or it's at $6.50. So if you, would, if you want to go down to the deviation level, which it did just hit a minus one deviation level, yep. 923.50, then you can go in, and there's the 924. Just looking at my scanner here. That's sitting at 71 bucks. That would have been, like, dirt cheap. That would have been, like, a $95 sell at that point. So... You'd be up a pretty good little profit, about seventy bucks on that one. You'd be up about eighty bucks on the um, the nineteen thirty two at this moment. Now again, if you were what I do is if I go in and let's say I'm selling that nineteen thirty three or nineteen thirty one point five, then what I do is I take profit when it hits the strike, so right about fifty seven. So if I sell for like for ninety or eighty, I'm gonna buy it back for about fifty five dollars. Understood. Great, thanks so much. Hey, you bet. Good call, thank you. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.